Hey, welcome to John's Films. Today I'm starting to look at if I made a good decision or not. The decision was to get rid of my two 1080 Ti's and get a 2080 Ti. Is that going to help me in my timeline editing, in my rendering, or was it a bad call? Let's find out. A quick thank you to GBC Live. Gave me a good idea to use a bigger pointer and I've enabled mouse trails as well. GBC, let me know if you can see these as you're watching the videos going forward. Thanks for the comment. To get started, we'll look at the configuration we're testing today. Now, we're going to test the timeline I've used in my previous videos. This time we're doing it with an RTX 2080 Ti. That's right, sold the two 1080s and uh, upgraded to a 2080 Ti. At least I hope it's an upgrade. Let's take a look. First, as we start, just like previously, we're gonna check a few settings. Most importantly, we're going to turn off the use of optimized media. We're going to check our render cache is none. We're not using any fusion here, and we've made sure our proxy mode is off. Now I'm disabling effects for the beginning. We're going to have some raw footage, and it immediately goes to 2997. This is incredibly smooth. Works just like you would hope a 2080 Ti would. Jumping ahead a bit to where we've got some coloring effects. Got a dynamic zoom. Again, 2997 runs nice and easily. Now you may say, well, we've got a few, few more iterations of DaVinci Resolve 15 with some patching under our belt, and that's true. So things have improved, but should you buy a 2080 Ti now, this is what you could expect, which is near flawless playback. Now we're moving into our noise reduction section. And again, quite clean. Runs well. Uh, the processor isn't working too hard. At least my fans haven't ramped, right? Graphics card's taken a pretty good amount of the load. And for the most part, it's running along without any issue. So next, let's check those render times. And what I learned is what I hoped. A single 2080 Ti matches the SLI 1080 Ti's. It does have ray tracing, which I can use in some games, though I'm not that much of a gamer. It's kind of neat to see. And when you look at the NVIDIA encoder, which has been bundled now into DaVinci Resolve Studio, you can see rendering, and this was H.265 encoding with MP4 container, or four minutes and three seconds, which is pretty fantastic. Now you may say, John, you didn't pick up that much performance, and you're right. But it is a lot quieter and it's a lot less heat, so that's a plus. Now, I've had some comments in these videos, people saying, hey, John, you idiot, uh, you're trying to edit in a delivery codec, you're, you don't get it. Uh, and, and in fact, I kind of do. The point for me, though, is speed. I don't get much time to do this. I like to spend time with my family and at my job, and this is just a hobby. So if I can do anything, like going straight from my GH5 into an edit, rather than transcoding and being able to just pull the footage together as fast as possible and work in it without having to render it all the way down or deal with a bunch of settings, I'm in. So it's worth it for me to go to the 2080 Ti. Didn't speed it up that much, but um, I'm hoping it's future proofing it. And when I do get a chance to game, I at least get to see some of those ray tracing uh, demos and whatnot working, which is pretty cool to see. And I'm excited to see what comes next. Thanks for watching. Hope you have a great day.